you just watched the 1.4 live stream, you're excited for characters like Jing Lu, Topaz is just like me. I mean, I am the certified number one Topaz enjoyer. I think I could say that myself. Shut your As of recently, every limit character has been extremely strong on their release. So you can expect every single option as of right now coming to be a decent character. Let's hop right into the video. Jing Lu, just like Yang Qing, is an ice damage dealer. The difference between Jing Lu and Yang Qing is that Jing Lu is a destruction character, meaning she has more AoE coverage than a character like Yang Qing. Destruction characters are normally really good in most situations because they are the most versatile characters in the game. Characters like Clara you can slot in any single team composition, and a character like Blade can function just like Clara as a sub DPS. Even the characters in here like Hook can act as a main DPS, Arlen can be a very nice sub DPS as well, and Denim, be really too Lunai, can be a very solid hyper carry character. So all of the characters in the destruction path are very versatile, meaning they all function in different team comps and can be used in many team comps, Den Heng being the exception to the rule here. Now Jing Lu is going to be a little different from a character like Den Heng. She doesn't eat up as many skill points as Den Heng does. Now, she won't be as flexible as a character like Clara in Blade, so you cannot use her as a sub DPS. But what's very interesting about this character is that you can use destruction characters in here alongside Jing Lu in the same team comp, because these characters benefit from being in the same party as Jing Lu. A character like Blade wants his HP to be sucked. Pause, I could have just said drain, I don't know why I said that. Jing Lu will drain his HP thus making him do more damage himself and Jing Lu powering up her own personal damage. These two characters work really well together, so if you have Blade, consider getting Jing Lu because of this. A character like Clara will work really well with Jing Lu as well. Clara is a self-sufficient damage dealer much like Blade, meaning you could put her in the team with Jing Lu and she won't bother taking any of those skill points from Jing Lu. On top of that, Clara will have a higher taunt value meaning she will be the one getting hit from the enemy, which takes away a lot of the hits that your Jing Lu will potentially be hit by, making Jing Lu a very safe option to have alongside Clara. Arlen also wants his HP to be lower because the lower his HP is, the more damage he will be doing up to a certain cap, and Jing Lu draining HP means Arlen can work pretty good with the character. One thing to take into consideration is that Arlen is a character that isn't very self-sufficient, so you're going to need another sustained character in the form of a shooter like Jephart in the same team comp with Jing Lu and Arlen in order to assure that Arlen doesn't die himself. Now the thing is, Jing Lu works just like any other damage dealer in Honkai Star for the most part. She abuses the best offensive supports in the game. A character like Pela works really well with Jing Lu because Pela provides an AoE defense shred which means Jing Lu's adjacent hitting skills will allow her to do much more damage because all the enemies will have lower defenses. And Pela at Eidolon 4 allows her to be able to reduce the resistances of the enemy with the ice element, meaning Jing Lu will also do more damage because the enemy's resistances will be lowered. Now, Silver Wolf is another offensive supporter character that comes to mind. I would say Silver Wolf is going to be one of Jing Lu's best options. The reason being is because one team comp I have in mind, which we'll show in a second, works really well with Jing Lu and other ice characters as well. On top of that, Silver Wolf can put that ice weakness on the enemy, allowing the enemy to take more damage, helps with lower gear requirements on your Jing Lu. Maybe you don't have the best substats relics on your Jing Lu, Silver Wolf will help with that because she will lower the defenses of the enemy, making you deal much more damage. Now, just like Pela, Silver Wolf is also a skill point positive character. Now, if you're looking for a very solid team comp of Jing Lu, look no further than a team like this. Now, pretend I had Lynx in this last slot or a character like Fu Xuan. Particularly, Lynx will be much better because Lynx would help with the CC that the enemy will throw on your team comp and also being a very solid healer in the team comp. Anyways, but Fu Xuan is still pretty good with Jing Lu regardless. This team comp allows you to put the ice weakness on the enemy alongside quantum but the enemy already has quantum weakness you don't have to worry about that 50 percent chance of landing the ice weakness on the enemy with silver wolf furthermore pretend this is jing lu this is a picture of yang ching because jing lu is not in the game currently but jing lu here will take advantage of one particular thing with silver wolf if you want to save time you can actually use your genius of brilliant stars which is going to be the quantum damage bonus relic set on your Jing Lu, boosting her damage by a great amount because you will ignore the enemy's defense by 20%, which is a huge portion of damage because enemies at the hardest contents in the game have super high defenses. 
And since you'll have Silver Wolf in the team comp, well, the enemy will always have that quantum weakness if it doesn't already have it. So Silver Wolf will definitely be a great option to have alongside Jing Lu if you also plan to use that quantum bonus set. But if you plan to use a more Whaley setup, then you would use a team like this. Pela providing the AoE defense shred, Luocha being the most skill point positive healer in the game, and Bronya being a character to greatly increase the damage of your main damage dealer, or the only damage dealer in here, which is going to be Jing Lu. Now, the interaction between Bronya and Jing Lu is a little different than what it used to be because there was slight tweaks to the character, but Bronya will still be an amazing supporter for Jing Lu. Let's just say that. This is also a team comp you could use with your Jing Lu. Now, Arlen is a character that actually doesn't use any skill points whatsoever. So, like Farah, he'll be able to make sure that they these two characters don't take away any skill points from your main damage dealer, in this case, Jing Lu. And Jephart being the pretty solid sustaining option here for your Arlen and your Jing Lu too. Even though Jing Lu does drain the HP of your characters, Jephart will give a massive shield to the team that skills based on this defense. And currently, right now, enemies aren't really going to lower your defenses. Well, if you have reflect resistance on your jet part, which also helps with mitigating that. And as of right now, there isn't too many enemies in the game that lowers the defenses of your characters. So jet part shield will always be as strong as it can be for most of the time. Now, when it comes to light cone choices, the most welcome you is going to be a very solid light cone to have on Jinglu because she's a character where you'll use her basic attack, her elemental skill, doing damage to the enemy with both abilities. And you'll also do damage with your ultimate. So you'll have 100% uptime on the attack boosting capabilities for your Jing Lu, which is very nice considering Jing Lu is a character that wants all of the attacks she can get because she gets so much crit damage and crit rate already. Under the Blue Sky is a solid option, but Jing Lu doesn't need too much crit rate. It does, however, give an attack increase, which is always valuable on her. So if you have this light cone, you can use it, but I wouldn't put it over the Moles Welcome You. A secret vow might seem like a very solid choice, but the thing is about Jing Lu is that she drains the HP of her allies and not herself, so this would be a solid light cone to actually have on your Clara or your Blade if you plan to use them alongside your Jing Lu. Heck, even Arlen, for instance, would really love this light cone. The 4.5 star light cone on the Fallen Aeon from Herda Simulated Universe Shop you can utilize on your Jing Lu really well. It gives you an attack increase which stacks up whenever you attack, and it also gives you more damage when you weakness break the enemy. So if you plan to use her against enemies that are weak to ice, or you use her with Silver Wolf, you'll really love this free-to-play light cone on your Jing Lu. Jing Lu's 5-star limited light cone will yield better results than the options we have in the game currently, but the free-to-play options aren't too far behind in terms of damage. So if I had to rate her from a free-to-play to a whale bait, I would say she sits in the free-to-play friendly range because she has great options in terms of light cones, she can utilize a lot of the free-to-play supporter characters, and she also utilizes Silver Wolf really well, which means she can use the four-piece quantum set, which helps you in farming because you don't have to farm for any other set in the game if you already have pieces you're not using. Topaz is a character that you all know I'm highly anticipating, so I'm only going to give you the best information possible. And Topaz is, on the contrary to a character like Jing Lu, a pretty scope point positive damage dealer, which is really crazy considering the hunt class is mostly known of characters that utilize these skill points every single turn. Now, Seal puts out crazy impressive numbers while also being a part of one of the rarest elements in the game, the quantum element. She utilizes the quantum set really well. She has the best hunt five star light cone and she has some of the best damage numbers with her ult multipliers and her elemental skill. So Topaz has to put out impressive numbers or at least be really good as a single target damage dealer. Or else why would you go for her? Well, you'll be surprised exactly what she can do for your team comps. Let me explain. First of all, Topaz is a fire character, meaning a character like Asta is going to be one of the best supports you can use alongside her. Asta is the premier fire buffer, but she works virtually well with any character in the game. That is thanks to her speed buff and her attack buff. The speed buff allowing you to put attack boots on your Topaz and other characters using the team comp, and the attack buff greatly increasing the damage you'll deal on your Topaz. Alongside that, Asta can use the Planetary Rendezvous for a fire damage boost to your Topaz, increasing her fire damage greatly, and with her traces, she gives even more of a fire damage boost increase to Topaz, making Asta the best support you can use in the team comp. Now, before we actually do get into the team comps for Topaz, Clara works really well with Topaz because she increases 
the damage Topaz will be doing because Topaz will increase the action forward of Numbi whenever Clara does a follow-up attack on the enemy, allowing Numbi to get more hits, which means more DPS uptime for Topaz. So a team comp like this would work really well for Topaz because Locha is a very nice skill point positive character to have in any of your team comps with any DPS character. He's extremely versatile. Now Asta might not be the best supporter to have alongside Clara because she does give a speed boost to Clara, but the speed boost also applies to the whole team. So the whole team will have their speed increase. So it'll almost be as if the speed boost given to Clara didn't matter in the first place. Placing Asta and Clara together is very good because these two characters have the highest taunt values in the team comp, which means if you have Asta next to Clara and an enemy has an adjacent hitting skill, well, that means Clara or Asta getting hit will proc Clara into doing the counter attack, which will action forward Numbi most of the time, if not all the time. But if you want a more standard hyper carry team comp, then you can use Bronya instead of Asta, which will greatly increase the damage of your Topaz and just her alone. But the attack and crit damage increase will also benefit Clara as well. And if you're a little feisty like me, maybe you even have a DPS Luocha. Ting Yun gives energy to Topaz, which allows Topaz to get her ult much more often, which means you'll have more hits with Numbi because of the way Topaz's ult works. Himiko works really well with Asta, assuming the enemy has fire weakness. Himiko does have a follow-up attack, which is very good for Numbi, which allows Numbi to get more turns. So Himiko will be a very nice character to have alongside your, your Asta and Topaz. She also benefits from the all the buffs Asta provides just like Topaz because she's a fire character as well. Now something a little wacky you could try is a team with QQ and Silver Wolf, a character like Fushuan or Lynx for the quantum element in order to help with putting that quantum weakness on the enemy or the fire weakness and then Topaz in the last slot. Now you might be wondering how would a team comp like this even work? Now you need one thing. Eidolon 4 from QQ allows her to get Autarky which will deal a follow-up attack to the enemy if she procs that 24% chance. QQ being in a team full of very skill point positive characters allows her to use up all the skill points in the team and not have to worry about anything else. Now please do keep in mind this is a feast or famine team. It may not work. It may work. It all depends on if QQ is feeling a little generous that day. But also keep in mind that Silver Wolf still does greatly benefit Topaz as an offensive supporting character because of the defense stretch she puts on enemy or the off chance of putting that fire weakness on the enemy allowing your Numbi and Topaz to deal massive damage to the enemy's toughness bar. But if you still get Quantum, please do keep in mind one thing. Just like Jing Lu, Topaz can abuse the genius of Brilliant Star's Quantum Damage bonus set because she will have Silver Wolf in the team comp. So this will definitely be a team that I cannot wait to try out with Topaz. But like I said before, it is a Feast or Famine team. Now another character I cannot wait to synergize with Topaz is going to be Kafka. And that's because Kafka has a follow-up attack with her Trace, allowing her to push the action forward of Numbi and if she's in a team with Topaz, who is a skill point positive character, well, Kafka can act as the main damage dealer, dealing massive damage. She is a pretty versatile character, so you can put her in most teams. It may not be the most optimal thing, but it still can work. Jing is another character you might want to look out for when it comes to the release of Topaz, and that is because Topaz increases the follow-up attack damage of all of your damage dealers. Now keep in mind that Jing does only have one follow-up attack and that is very dependent on his Lightning Lord. So the damage is backloaded and it does take a while to hit the enemy. But boy oh boy, when that enemy gets hit by that giant being, he's going to feel every single hit of that damn sword. Now when it comes to Light Cone choices, Topaz is going to be a little more picky than a character like Jing Lu. And that is because Topaz is a lot more different than how the current roster of Hunt characters work. However, the Yang Qing signature, Sleep Like a Dead, the standard banner 5 star light cone, is going to be very beneficial on Topaz because it increases her crit damage and her crit rate, which is very good for any hunt damage dealer. So it's a very versatile and safe option. However, Source Play is going to be a very solid 4 star light cone to use on Topaz, which allows her to do much more damage if she's hitting the same enemy consecutively. And since Topaz and Numbi are two different entities, just like Jing and the Lightning Lord, she will benefit greatly from having this light cone, doing massive damage and increasing her own damage potential hitting the same enemy over and over. Do keep in mind though that this is another feast or famine option when it comes to Topaz because when you do swap enemies, your damage boost will go away. 
When it comes to the other light cone choices, they're kind of meant for Topaz and not really that good because she does work differently from all the other hunt characters. Now, do keep in mind that her 5 star signature light cone is always going to yield better results than all the other options in the game currently. And that is because, well, it is the limited light cone it has 5 star stats and it does greatly increase the damage for the characters tailor made for, in this case, Topaz. Now, the 5 star Herd of Shop light cone can be used on Topaz but it isn't going to be better than the 4 star light cone swords play, so please do keep that in mind. So from free to play friendly to whale bait, a character like Topaz will still be free to play friendly, not as free to play friendly as a character like Jing Lu, and the reason being is because if you're using her outside of the hyper carry team comps, then she is going to be a lot more dependent on who you put her in the team comp with. So if you don't have some of those 5 star options, or follow up attacking options whether they're in the four star or five star category most of them are in the five star category as of right now then she will kind of feel a little lackluster compared to other five star hunt characters like seal for instance but that is outside of the hyper carry team comp with argenti on the way resembling a male version of himiko potentially it's very hard to tell exactly what he's going to do as an erudition character but all we can say is that he probably will be a damage you just like himiko doing mass AoE damage and just brutally annihilating the enemies in an AoE setting. Now let's just go ahead and get this out the way. A character like Clara functions differently than a character like Erudition 5 star Argenti. And that is because Clara is a counter attacking character. She is skill point positive, meaning she never has to use her elemental skill to do damage because most of her damage comes in the form of being hit by the enemy and counter attacking, right? A character like Argenti will probably be ult dependent just like all the other erudition options in the game currently and need to use skill points to generate energy for himself and to deal more damage if he has a damage stacking mechanic built into his kit. So he is going to work differently from a character like Clara so do keep that in mind when you talk about physical damage coverage right. I would say his current competition is a character like Su Shang who is a hunt damage dealer but of the physical element. She does use a little more skill points depending on the Eidolons you have for the character, but she is a damage dealer first and foremost. Now she is a character we've all gotten for free, but I figure that the Rudition 5 star Genti will deal way more damage than Su Shang. It probably won't even be close. The reason I bring this up is because Kafka is a character that benefits greatly from having a physical dot damage dealer in the same team comp with her, and that is because she procs the physical weakness break effect dots that the ally puts into the enemy, right? So Kafka detonates those dots with her ultimate. So the Erudition character Argenti may be a very great option to use alongside Kafka, but we have to wait and see what this character does before we say that he will work well with Kafka. If Argenti is just like every single other Erudition damage dealer in the game currently, he will benefit greatly having Ting Yun in the same team comp because if he is ult dependent just like the other options, then Ting Yun will give him the much ult needed ult charge that he needs to deal massive damage to the enemy. And then Bronya being really good with any hyper carry damage dealer means that Bronya will greatly increase his damage output with the attack, crit damage, and the damage boosting capabilities. And also being the cleanse option in the team comp if you're using a character like Bailu alongside Argenti. But that's only if you're using Bailu. You can have any other cleanser in the team comp, and that would be even better than having one cleanser, right? But of course, depending on how he works, you can use a character like Pela. If he works really well with Kafka, that'll be even better because the AoE coverage means the defense shred that Pela provides will be very good for Kafka and Argenti. You can use Asta, which is very good for DOT teams in general, with the speed and the attack increasing. Capability is greatly increasing the turns you take and the DOT damage that you'll do to the enemy. And heck, even Yukong might work with Argenti, but I'm leaning on the fence of not including her in this video because the only reason it being is that you probably already use her with your Den Hang BB2 and I right now. And she is one of the best, if not the best, supporter for that character in general. Now, unfortunately, the erudition options in terms of light cones aren't very good in Honkai Star right now. I expect this to improve over time as we get more options in terms of light cones for this path. But this 5 star light cone with Himiko, the standard banner 5 star light cone, will be very valuable in Argenti and the reason being is because if he works well with Kafka and he is the one breaking the enemy's toughness then he'll benefit greatly with the damage increase he gets from breaking that toughness of the enemy and the attack increase in AoE settings. This will be one of the best light cones to have on the character because this will greatly increase 
his damage in dot teams with Kafka. And that is only if you include him with Kafka. He could be a follow-up attack user, but I don't expect him to deal follow-up attacks. I think that's kind of weird as a physical damage dealer. I know Clara does count as a follow-up attack user, but she does counter attacks. Again, I don't see him being a follow-up attack user, but if he does use follow-up attacks, even though we already have Jing and Himiko doing that already, then he will benefit from the four-star Hurdle Light Cone. If he is ult dependent, this will be the best Light Cone option to have on the character, which is make the world clamor, right? The four-star Servo Light Cone you got for free in the beginning of the launch of Honkai Staro. This Light Cone will greatly increase his ult damage and give him much needed energy towards his ult. But if he's not ult dependent, this will not be the best option to have on a character. But if he is, like I said, ult dependent, then this is going to knock every single other option out of the park. The seriousness of Breakfast is going to be a decent option to have on him. Keep in mind, this is as free to play as you can get because you do get this for free in the game. But this probably will be the solid free to play option you can use if you don't have anything else. So from a free to play to whale bait, I would say our gen T is honestly, we don't know. We don't know what the character does. And heck, he could be the most whale bait character in Honkai Star Rail, just like Denheng BB29. But at the same time, he could be the most free to play character. We have to wait and see what the character's kit entails before we give this judgment. But all I can say is if you like his design just like I like Himiko's, then definitely go for the character because god dang, the red hair hits different. And last but not least, whoa, who woke. This character I'm greatly anticipating because I think she will change Honkai Star Rail forever. Now, she is a 5-star Abundance win character, but do keep in mind, we already have so many defensive options in the game currently with the arrival of Fushuan and Lynx as well, that I don't think she's going to be a full defensive option, which means she has ways of maybe increasing the damage your allies do, maybe even giving them energy potentially, or maybe giving them a ton of damage bonus increases like a character like Bronya. Now, if she is a solo sustaining character, just like Bailu, Luocha, and all the other Abundance characters, then you would want her to have a cleanse, be skill point positive, and have ways of providing utility for the team. But again, with how many defensive options we have in the game currently, I don't expect her to do as much stuff as a character like Luocha in terms of sustaining the team. Now, there is one reason why I'm greatly anticipating this character, and that is because hyper carry teams may potentially break the game with the arrival of Hua Hua. The reason being is because Silver Wolf is the best offensive debuffing support you can use alongside your hyper carry damage dealer, and Bronya is also the second, well, you know, I would say her and Silver Wolf are both hand in hand when it comes to fueling the hyper carry team comps as being the best offensive supporting characters right now in the game. I mean, they're at the top of tier list for crying out loud, and they're both Bronya. I guess it's Bronya bias I'm having right now. I mean, it's Hoya versus Fault. Anyways, these two characters fueling the hyper carry team comp, and Bronya being the character that has a cleanse in the team comp for the hyper carry damage dealer, and we need a sustaining character to fuel a comp like this, where you have two weaknesses or two different elements that Silver Wolf can put onto the enemy. If the enemy already has win weakness, then you'll always put that quantum weakness on the enemy. So Huo Huo being a wind character could be a very solid option to have in this team comp because Bronya already has the cleanse, which means even if Huo Huo doesn't have a cleanse in her kit, she could still benefit this team greatly. Now, if she has ways of increasing the damage of the character like Seal, or has ways of increasing the utility for the team, then she will be a must pull in my honest, humble opinion. So, do keep in mind, we have to wait, you know, before we see what her kit entails, but if she is what I'm, you know, insinuating here, then she is, to me, a must pull. Now, all this falls flat if she is a soul-sustaining abundance character like Ruocha, you know, a character like Natasha, Lynx, Bailu, and characters like Jephard for the defensive option category, Fushuan now with the release of her, then she is a character that, in my opinion, will probably be a skip. But if she trades off some of her defensive capabilities for nice offensive supporting buffs, then she is, in my humble, honest opinion, a must pull for me, me personally. Maybe for you too, if you use Seal and you like using the hyper carry team comps with her and even other characters in the game, potentially. Since she is in the Path of Abundance, she will be first and foremost a sustaining character. She may not be a solo sustaining quote unquote character if she trades off some of her defensive capabilities, but this four star light cone will still be very good for the character just like it is 
on every single other abundance character because it gives them energy regeneration rate which helps towards funneling the ult for the characters making them much more skill point positive if you have energy regeneration rope on your character right and giving them higher output outgoing healing bonus on their ultimate which greatly increases the healing they do with their ults again this is only if she is a character that does a ton of healing so from free to play to whale bait i'm going to lean towards whale bait and the reason being is because hear me out we already have so many nice solid defensive options when it comes to abundant characters with the release of lynx Fushuan, lynx in particular being a four star abundance character which has tons of cleansing tons of healing ways of mitigating cc effects on your allies increasing their taunt value increasing their hp she is a very overloaded character as a four star healer now do keep in mind if she is a sustaining character then you can safely skip her but she trades off some of those defensive capabilities for offensive capabilities then she is in my honest opinion a must pull and any character that is a must pull is whale bait <laughs> so yeah i would say she is a will bait character for right now but it's going to be the video here i don't know if you could tell you probably could tell towards the end of this video my voice started to give out because i have been recording for well over an hour right now and it's honestly hard to keep up with how fast i speak and how frequently i speak and the tone of my voice because i do like to emphasize a lot of the words i say in my videos <clears throat> i have to keep doing that because my throat is very sore right now <laughs> but hopefully you got something out of this when it comes to jing lu and topaz those two characters are going to be pretty good in terms of what they do in their niche and their team comp specifically hyper carry for jing lu and a character like topaz being a nice supporting hunt character which is weird i'm saying that a supporting hunt character for teams that want to utilize fall attacks like jing himiko maybe even potentially kafka of course we have to wait and see for that now topaz is a character i will be making a ton of videos on so definitely look forward to that i will try to pull jing lu and make videos on her as well and when it comes to huo huo i cannot wait to get this character or at least figure out what she does i don't know why i'm saying that i don't know what she does maybe you know i don't know okay i don't look at least and then argenti is a character that probably will function like other erudition characters in the game currently just being a different element that's honestly what i feel i mean elemental coverage is a great thing when it comes to damage dealers so i don't see that as being a bad thing per se that's the video here thank you for watching hope you got something out of this and i will see you in the next video have a good rest of your day peace